What I'd like to have a look at in this video is something known as Windows Defender Application Control or WDAC. So this is another way to basically control what sort of applications will be able to run on a Windows 10 desktop. Now before we get into it, let's just run over um, some details about it. So Microsoft has some good documentation here. And if we go in and have a look at it, we'll see that um, our Windows Defender application control gives us the ability to uh, look at and determine uh, the attributes of the code signing certificates, to look at the binaries, to look at the reputation of the app, uh, and so on. So we're able to make decisions and set policies as to whether the applications can run based on uh, all of those uh, criteria. So you'll notice that Windows Defender Application Guard is basically a uh, feature of Windows 10 and we really want to have some of the later builds on there to be able to uh, achieve this. Now one of the questions is going to be well what about App Locker which is also part of Windows 10? Uh, at the end of the day down the bottom here you'll find uh, Microsoft's recommendation as to when to choose um, WDAC versus App Locker. So the big differences here are that WDAC once you enable it is going to be across the whole device where App Locker you can basically target to users and groups on the devices and also App Locker will run on older versions of Windows. WDAC basically is a Windows 10 and above version. Now with that in mind let us go in and have a look at how to configure this. Now if we go to a directory here called uh, Windows Schemas Code Integrity you'll see you have a number of example policies for WDAC. Now these are the policies that I'm going to use to set this up. You can go in and customize your own policies uh, if you so choose. Now the one I'm going to implement here is called the default Windows Enforce. So this is basically going to uh, prevent running of any applications except those in the Windows and the program files directory. Now you can customize this uh, and set it up the way that you want it, but you'll get an idea here that it's basically just an XML file with the configuration. So I'm going to use that to go in and uh, basically prevent applications running on this desktop. So you'll see here I've got an exe file. So if I just click on that, you'll see that it currently uh, basically does run. Now the other thing to note here is if we go in and have a look uh, basically at this directory here called in the System32 Code Integrity, you'll see um, that we've got one file here, a driver's policy.p7b. Now we'll come back to that because this is basically the database that uh, WDAC will put uh, the policy engine in. Now to run all this what we need to do is we need to configure this uh, with PowerShell. Uh, so what we'll need to do is fire up our PowerShell ISC and run it as an administrator. Now we can like I said go in and configure uh, the default policy. We can modify that to uh, basically achieve what we're after. Now if we have a look at this and again make this a little bigger to go in and view tidy that up. You'll see here that what I'm going to do is run the command convert from CI policy uh, and then I'm specifying the path to that uh, code integrity example. So I'm going to go in and use that default Windows enforced policy XML and I'm going to output that to that system32 code integrity directory I showed but to a file called sipolicy.p7b. So all I need to do is to go in and run this all right, so that's executed. Now if I go in and have a look uh, basically at that code integrity location, you'll see that I've got this si.pv7. Uh, so that's where the configuration uh, has gone. Now if I go in and have a look at my downloads and I try and run PuTTY, you'll notice that it does run. So what I need to do uh, is to reboot the machine. So WDAC will uh, basically enable itself fully once you have uh, restarted the environment. Now WDAC can also be configured to for example uh, load up and provide protection uh, pre-boot as well so it's an extremely powerful way to determine what exactly runs on devices. Uh, it does give more security than uh, App Locker, for example, but there's a little bit more configuration to do, especially if you want to create uh, exemptions. Remember that WDAC 
is something that will be applied to the whole machine uh, independent of what user logs into it. So uh, it has its um, advantages and disadvantages over AppLocker and we can use both of these together if you want. So you can use WDAC and uh, you can use uh, AppLocker in combination. So let's log back into the machine and again uh, if we now go in and try and run that uh, application. So let's go into downloads and try and run our uh, putty there. We should see a message warning us that yes, this environment is now protected with Windows Defender application control and it's preventing the running of applications that weren't in that initial policy. So we've basically set up a policy that only the standard Windows stuff, Windows directories, program files can run. Anything else uh, is basically considered uh, something that can't run. So again, simple as that. Now we are on a standalone machine here and remember that you can push this out with policies using things like Intune. Now if I want to get the machine back to the way it was, what I can do is basically go into that location. You'll see there's that file that was created. All I need to do is go in and delete that. I'll need to be an administrator of the box obviously to do that. If I close that uh, and go in and reboot the machine once more, that will then go in and remove the WDAC capability from the machine. I'll be able to go in and execute all the files uh, as normal. So remember that WDAC is a way to whitelist applications and uh, files on your environment based on a number of advanced criteria. It is the preferred option from Microsoft to go and configure and whitelist your application because it is being regularly updated and improved and enhanced and that is Microsoft's recommendation to look at using um, WDAC more than uh, something like AppLocker. But as mentioned, you can again use both together uh, on the same machine in the same environment if you so wish. So let's log back into the machine. Uh, let's go back into our location here. You'll see that that uh, policy file has been removed. And because that has been removed, let's go back in and have a look at our downloads and try and run our exe. And we should see that it executes as normal. All right, so again, very, very straightforward uh, process here. So the way that I uh, enabled that was I went into uh, PowerShell and I ran the appropriate uh, command. Now the command will basically read an XML configuration file and create a uh, another binary that you would need to uh, basically put in the uh, appropriate uh, location. So let's open uh, that file again here just to give you an idea of what the command is. So it's a convert from dash CI policy with the appropriate uh, settings there and once that's enabled reboot the machine WDAC will be uh, enabled and if you want to get rid of it generally just go in and delete uh, that si policy dot pb7 that was created so it's really as simple uh, as that to do and as mentioned you can deploy it using things like endpoint manager uh, and intune as well so hopefully this has given you a bit of an overview an idea of wdac and how it uh, can be used much like app locker but there are some differences in how it is uh, enabled and what it can actually do and I encourage you to go and look at that Microsoft documentation to understand the differences in uh, in totality. So once again thank you very much for watching this video.